just for you. <laughs> Okay guys, this is gonna be a tutorial on how to make a part from our DIY large carbon fiber composites kit that you can find on industrygarage.com. Okay, so now we're gonna go over everything that comes in the kit. So for the large kit, you'll get five yards of 3K 2x2 two two twill carbon fiber. This is probably the most commonly used carbon fiber, one of the best weave patterns in my opinion. Uh, most of the 240Z is made out of this. Um, you're gonna get the System 2000 laminating epoxy resin and a uh, thing of the 2060 60 minute epoxy cure. That means it has a 60 minute pot life, which gives you more than actual 60 minutes of working with it. But um, that'll give you the most time to mess with this un unless you went with something crazy, but it's plenty of time. You're gonna get a roller with a bunch of polyester rolling sleeves. It's gonna come with a ton of gloves, more than you need, and a ton of brushes, more than you need in two different sizes. A, uh, one of these rollers to help get air bubbles out. A bunch of squeegees. It's cool having like the different versions of like ways to apply the resin available to everyone because some people might really like the roller. Some people might just like brushing on only. Or I mean, I really like squeegeeing, but they're good for different times also, but. You can kind of get a feel for how you like to apply stuff. Make sure they do the crazy glue trick with the brushes. Yes, we'll go over that again in a minute. But um, it also comes with their gallon mixing kit, which is everything here, all these cups, these mixing sticks, different measuring things. Um, and then everything you need to release your mold, AKA your hood, whatever part you use. Uh, so we're looking at PVA release film, and the part all paste. Okay, so what are we making today? We're gonna remake Xavier's S2000 hood. It's a fairly easy part, it's pretty flat. So what I've done so far is just sanded the whole top with thousand grit. You can see there were some like little like uh, dirt nubs in the paint and other small stuff. It's not super necessary, but I figured I'd get them down. It takes two seconds to sand this thing with thousand. It's a flat hood and we're just gonna make the outside shell of it. So we're gonna do four layers of carbon fiber, 3K, two by two twill, and that should be plenty. And then we're gonna cut the skin off and use the bottom section of the actual aluminum hood, because this is aluminum, and bond that to the carbon fiber outer skin. What we're gonna start with though is a uh, part all paste. So you'll have a, this exact same size container and you wanna just uh, apply the wax and buff it pretty much right off. If you're doing a part this big, you wanna wait at least 30 seconds, but by the time you get to the other side, it's been at least 30 seconds. Uh, set a layer of wax on, then buff it off. You wanna continue that four times. So you have four layers of wax built on, and then the final one, you make sure you buff it off pretty well. You can go a little liberal at first with the wax, and then kind of uh, stop doing as much later. But. All right, we're buffing off our last layer of wax. You'll still see a slight residue on it, but it's fine. We're gonna spray the PVA release film next, and that will even everything out. Make sure you use a new towel each time, each layer. I'm going to be spraying my PVA out of a automotive paint gun, but you can brush it on. You can use a roller to roll it on. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. But I really enjoy spraying it on. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, with the PVA, you're gonna hit it with two medium wet coats. 
and then let it dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. It's supposed to be behind the seats. I really feel like a speed racer with these white gloves. He's going over that cliff. Ah! All right, so it's been about 30 minutes. Our PVA is completely dry. And now we're gonna move on to the carbon. There are multiple ways to lay down your first layer of carbon. You can lay down a layer of epoxy first and lay the carbon on top of that. You can lay down the carbon first, put the epoxy on top of that. Whatever way you wanna go. It's a little easier to make your weave perfect. Um, if you're gonna make the, the inside of this part is gonna be seen. So that's gonna be the part that's sitting against the outside of the current hood. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the first layer is perfect. We want the weave to be straight, not any wobbly weirdness. We're gonna go ahead and uh, measure out our carbon first, lay it down, and we're gonna start mixing some System 2000 and 2060 hardener. Um, you definitely want some good carbon fiber shears. We have these available on industrygarage.com, but they're also available through fiberglass.com as well. We do our same trick of pulling out a single carbon fiber strand or maybe three. That gives you a straight line. Well, it doesn't look straight for us, but it's straight for the uh, actual weave of the carbon. Nice audio, let me get closer. Okay, cool. Got our carbon cut. We're gonna go ahead and just lay this on there dry. Roop. Nice thing about it dry is because you know, you don't have to worry about this. If it was wet, if you lay your carbon down and you don't get it like perfectly set on the first layup, then you can run into problems where you have to pull it back up and you can pull off your PO ply, like your, I mean, sorry, your PVA release ply stuff. And that's no good. Actually, I'm gonna wet it out first, then I'm gonna trim the edge. You don't wanna let the edge of the carbon sit too far over your part because it'll droop over like this. And when it droops over, it actually raises up at the edge. So you get a big air pocket right on the edge of your part. So you wanna cut as close to it as you can. Um, but I wanna make sure I don't cut this dry and it's all shifting back and forth. And then I cut it too small. Um, Cause we're right here on the edge. So it's just wide enough in the back of the S2000 hood, but the front we got like 10 extra inches probably total. So. We're gonna go ahead and mix some System 2000 resin and 2060 hardener and start laying it up. Okay, a little tip for the uh, for these brushes. What you wanna do is take some super glue. A subscriber actually told me about this. You run it across the base of this. It'll hold all of the little fibers in. Best thing you wanna do is have a fiber let me see if it's soaked in. Yeah, last thing you want to do is have a fiber get loose in your part. We don't like it. No hairs. I like to dedicate this segment to uh, Deathstroke. Your hashtag will <laughs> be used greatly. Hashtag. Okay, so we're going to be mixing our 2000 resin with our 2060 hardener. And it's a three to one ratio, so three parts epoxy to one part hardener. And in their gallon mixing kit, they give you a bunch of different cups. You take the largest cup to mix in and you fill the second largest cup with epoxy. Fill up the largest cup with epoxy and fill up the cup that has the green lid with the hardener. actually ends up being a perfect three to one ratio. So you just take both of these guys. 
you know, it's the definition of idiot proof. I love when things are idiot proof. Because I'll be having some real idiot moments. Everybody does. Everybody does. Boop. Cool. And you can reuse those again. So if you need to mix another one, you can just boop boop. Makes it a lot easier. You don't have to like go weigh it and stuff. So, and there's also if, a bunch of different size cups with like actual measurements. Like this actually has measurements on it. So if you're mixing a smaller amount, you could always do that as well. But it's just three to one. So it's the same ratio. Cool. I'm gonna take my blue squeegee and my brush and start applying it. I'm gonna tack down a spot by putting some resin on it to keep it still. Um, and since we're putting the carbon onto the part dry, we want to make sure that we really squeeze it all through. So I'm gonna definitely hit everything with the squeegee, get all the air bubbles out of the back half of it. So I'll start with that much and squeegee it in. And then once we get to the end and we get it all covered, then we will uh, trim the outside of the carbon so it all matches. Work your way from the center out. Definitely helps. If you go from the outside in, you can get some air bubbles trapped inside. Trees are pretty easy to press out, but it's always easier. If you don't press the air bubble out to the edge, if it's fully wetted out, then it won't uh, it won't come through the fabric very easily. So you might as well push it all the way to the edge and you can push out the edge of that. You can already see when I go over this, this edge right here, right here. It'll stay down when I actually tap it down, but it, you can see it starts to raise up. That's because this is hanging over. So a little extra resin and then a good trim, nice and close. We'll take all that out of there. I like these wire brushes. Almost like he's just a professional, professional, super sophisticated, licensed, certified composites man now. Yes. After building one whole vehicle, yes. a bunch of extra parts, we shall call him Resin Man. All right, so I'm gonna cut pretty close to the edge. Um, it's not a great idea to cut wet fabric with your nice carbon fiber uh, scissors, but if you uh, if you wipe them down with like some lacquer thinner, mineral spirits, or paint thinner, or whatever, after you're done, they're uh, just make sure you don't forget. To do that. You can see here on the edge, the carbon is running flat, and then right when it gets to the edge, it's bumping up. That's from this dangling carbon. Mm. So if you cut it and then smooth it back down again, and it doesn't have any resin, I mean, any carbon excess weighing it down, it'll actually lay flat. So it's kind of odd that it bunches up like that, but cut it off and you're good.
And on this, this second layer, the weave is going 90 degrees different than the last one. The last one, the layer was going this direction. That'll help for any warping of the, um, of like the hood after it's made. You usually want to crisscross your weave. It makes the part a little stronger. Not as worried about getting the weave exactly perfect on this one because this is going to be a middle layer, so it'll never be seen as long as it's not bunched up or doing anything crazy, as long as it's laying flat, we're okay. Evenly disperse this extra resin I got with the roller. It's very satisfying, actually. If your resin's even between your layers of carbon, then it'll sh it should lay flat. You don't really want some of your part to be more resin rich than others either, so. So now all of that wavy resin is now dispersed evenly. And we can roll on to our final layer of carbon. So I'm gonna be on the front side? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cause now we're 90 degrees different. Um, come to me more. Yeah, just keep your end up and I'll do my end. Um, let a little, little bit of slack. A little more. Cool. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, so we have the final layer of carbon on. Um, I'm going to squeegee this one and, and then go back with just the brush and make sure it's got a lot of resin. It's a little resin rich on the top layer. Um, this is Xavier's hood for his car that we're repainting right now. And we're actually gonna end up painting this, but for this project, we're gonna make it look as good as possible. We're gonna leave some accents though. Yeah. I don't know how, but. We're gonna leave some carbon. And the inside will be all carbon too. So when you open the hood, you see that. It'll be humble baller status. Exactly. Humble baller. I think the most exciting part from this for me is not getting any more dents. So as I'm squeegeeing this, more tips. Um, the roller is very nice to use in the middle layers. I wouldn't use it on the first or final layer just because it, uh, it gives off a little bit of fuzz from the roller. Not much, but um, like you probably wouldn't even see it in the part. But just in case, I would only use it on the middle layers of your layup. The, I mean, you, you can, Xavier and I were talking like if you're trying to get lint off of a roller when you're painting, you can always roll it on with some duct tape or something like that and try to get some of the little lint babies off. And they all have their, their pluses, like the squeegee will get all of the air up, make sure it's really, really tight, but, um, but it doesn't leave a lot of resin on. And the brush leaves a lot of resin on, but it doesn't get it very tight. And then the squeegee's like right in the middle, but the squeegee also is the best for getting it really even. You can get it even with a, um, no, I'm talking about the squeegee. The bra, the roller is the best for getting it even. Luckily the kit gives you all of the tools you need. Just make sure you use them the right application. You'll be good to go. Um, also, as you're laying it up, I don't know, you might've noticed we laid up 
uh, we have two layers that where the weave is going this direction and two layers where the weave is going this direction. Uh, you can see the weave is like the carbon darker line kind of follows that pattern. Um, it'll be a 45 and you can even do a zero degree where you cut the part sec um, to the side, but this part's too long. We'd have to have an intersection of like two different uh, layers of carbon, which could create a problem. So for this, um, just intersecting them is more than enough. Keeps the part real stiff. Otherwise, if they're all going the same direction, it'll want to It'll want to bend in one direction more than the other. It'll be stiff this way and bend that way. So you're slowly applying this layer so you can have like a better resin ratio, I guess? Um, so I'm adding this last layer in here. Well, this extra layer of resin on top. Now they've squeegeed everything out and made it all flat to uh, give a good boundary between the weave and the top of the part. Because if I left it like this, the weave is textured. Um, so if we like prime this, you'd see the weave in it. So some people will use like a gel coat to add on the last layer and then sand that thing smooth. But I like using the resin. Speed Racer, watch the Speed Racer again. It's just so funny. He was making fun of it at shows first, but now up. he's like, you know. It's, it's entertaining. It's, it's just, a very it's entertaining show. The show would not uh, survive. Speed, speed racer would get canceled real fast. Yes. <laughs> like talking to his like girlfriend, he's like, "Trixie," she's just like, "Oh, it's so nice out, it's so beautiful out here." He's like, "Trixie, stop talking. I'm trying to think." <laughs> like, <laughs> the thing you can try is uh, running a torch over it if you have a lot of uh, hair bubbles. Let's try the torch real quick, just for fun. So, in our final thick layer of resin, we have a little bit of air bubbles, which aren't the end of the world. You can always uh, just sand them off layer later. <laughs> Did it again. Or if you want, you can try hitting it with a little bit of heat. It'll bring them all up to the surface, hopefully pop them. Master of perfection. Yeah. It's better. You can still see a lot of the actual texture from the carbon weave, but it's good. What I read online, that cutting process is what really gives you that mm, mm. The, and the polishing and the, the good soup. All right, so we have four layers down here, all of our resin set. We just need to let this all dry and come back and hit it tomorrow. Today is a big day. Tim is finally clearing all the parts. Get to see how the final product will look. I'm down bad right now. Ate two jalapenos and my stomach's on fire. So I'm trying to struggle and make it through this long day. Ryan beside us been here since 6 a.m. Yes. Working hard. Working hard or hardly working? Working hard. Working hard. My grandfather used to say that all the time. <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> We're serious here.
Don't give me no wet socks now. <laughs> Dude, those socks. Your get up in general in the shop just doesn't make any sense. But. I get up and I go. <laughs> I don't even look down. I just jump out of bed and I start my day. <laughs> is looking perfect but how did we get here from where we were so we let it sit overnight and dry completely sanded it with 80 grit and we hit it with another layer of resin let that dry overnight and then we sanded that with 80 grit again and then stepped it up from 80 to 120 grit to 180 grit to 320 and then prepped it for paint clear coated it three times and this is the finished product good gloss for you guys that we like satin clear. I was say, we're the matte boys, but. <laughs> yeah, we're matte, yeah. But, I mean, it does look cool having a gloss. We actually, we did a pretty good job of laying our weave straight. Yeah, um, But so now you have, it. so now we have an outside shell of carbon fiber. So where do we go from here? The inside is, uh, we taped it down so it wouldn't fall away. It's fairly easy to release. Yeah. Um, so the inside looks good. We're probably gonna matte clear the inside of this because we like Matt. In the next video on this hood, we're gonna grind around the outside and actually bond this to the old shell. And we have another thing. Started messing with the, the CNC machine and we cut out a prototype of some like, kind of universal hood vents, or fender vents. Um, these are slightly larger than the average size you see now. So we're thinking it's gonna fit perfectly. Once it's made in pre-preg, it's gonna be really thin and malleable, so it'll contour to the hood perfectly. Um, so I think these on the sides will give him a lot of uh, ventilation because we're trying to get a lot of the temps out of your engine bay, right? Isn't that the main yeah, that's like point the... of doing most of this? A little weight savings and have a carbon fiber hood. But yeah, so we'll go through all of the, the final steps of how to bond an, a skin to the inside of your hood in another video. But for now, that's it. If you want one of these uh, DIY kits, we sell them in a large kit that's big enough to do a roof or a small kit that's good for like a two foot by two foot part. This hood's pretty long, but we still had 10 extra feet. So you have enough, even with the large kit, you can make another part if you really wanted to. There's a lot of resin and extra stuff. So you're set up to make more parts, but it's at least enough to cover a good bit. So if you want yours, you can go on to industrygarage.com. We have them all listed under IG parts and stuff like that. So until next time.